Something I've been too lazy to talk about is script boxes in advanced map. And basically what these will allow you to do is make an event happen when the player steps in a certain spot. In these cases, on the green script box. So whenever the player steps onto the green script box, an event will happen. Now they're fairly simple to use, but there's a couple of things that you've got to know about before you can actually use them. The first is how to write a script, of course, which hopefully you know. If not, see my scripting lesson. Start with lesson one. Assuming you know how to script, the next thing you'll need to know about is something a little more advanced called vars, which is part of scripting, but it's an element that I've never covered. Vars are very similar to flags, but they're different in their own instance. Because a flag, for example, OX 1200, that's only one flag, but var OX 1200 is actually way more than one. It's at least nine. You can go up to a lot. I haven't done it in a while, so I don't remember the exact amount but you can go a lot more than one using one simple var. So it's great for a sequence of events. Professional scripters will use them in their scripts. So let's get started. The first thing I'll do is open up my map. In this case, I guess I'll work in Pewter City. So I will create a script box and put it where I want. I'll put it right in front of the mark. And now I'll have to create my person that is going to be involved in this script. I'm going to open my grid so I can count it. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, they're just in my view range. I'll hit them one more time. So they'll take seven steps. Very good. So the next thing we need to do is write our script. So we'll open up Notepad and start it off. That we will do is put Jingle. And if you've seen Lesson 8, you'll kind of get the feel for this. Jingle will stop the player's motion. So if they're running or whatever, they'll stop moving. So we don't have to worry about them after that. Now we'll make a message. which sprite is my guy he is person number eight so show sprite eight Okay, now we gotta remove their sprite. Remove sprite eight. Set flag OX 1215. And now, to make sure that the event does not happen again, we're going to put set var OX, and I like to use 6000 and up from there. So 6000 OX 0001. Release end. And that'll do it. So now if we save this as a .rbc, script.rbc. So now that I have my script inserted, I'm going to assign it to my script box. I'm going to paste my offset. That's the offset that I inserted it to. Save it. And now right here for the unknown, I'll put three just because that's a standard value. And right here, the var number, I'm going to put 6,000, because as you recall, we used var 6,000. So we're done, really, except right here, for this guy, I need to make his ID 1215. 
save it. And I give him my standard sailor guy. And now we can open it up and test it. Now the message came up and everything worked, and now he'll just leave. Very good. So if we follow him, he'll be gone. And if we step back on the spot, it doesn't occur again. We can enter the Pokemart and come back out, and it still doesn't happen, and the guy is gone. So everything should work out fine. The reason for all this clear flag and show sprite nonsense is if I had the guy already disappeared because he disappeared from setting his flag now if I wanted him to reappear I would just use that clear flag like I did I'm just too lazy to write the second script so that's all there is to writing a script for var values to go into one last explanation you can set it just like I did right here 6000 and OX001 now if I want another script to happen after that, I could use var 0002, and then from there 0003. But 0002 will not happen until 0001 is complete. Now vars are the equivalent of flags, so you only want to use one per script, basically, if you know what I mean. By that I mean once I've used var 6000, I don't want to use it again because it'll mess things up. I'll want to move on to 6001, 6002, 6003, and they go on infinitely because all scripts that are related, you can just tie them in. If you want one script to happen after another happens, you just use the var value. For example, let's do another one. I'm going to really quickly paste my offset there and now I will write another script just very briefly and it'll be the pretty much the same thing jingle message I will use the same message too because I'm just that lazy and actually no never mind I'll keep on doing what I was doing I'll have to have another person so apply movement in fact actually I'll use the same person never mind that show sprite 8 and before I do that clear flag OX 12, 15, come, and I will give him the exact same value, never mind that, walking that, pause, move, zero, and from here I'll make him say, Hmm. I'll make him say, did you go in? And nothing fancy because you guys should know how to do this. And from here I can just copy and paste almost the same thing. Delete this. Very good except right here I'll set var 2 alright so let us compile it and, and then it. right here is the offset I want so I will write that down really quickly there we go so we'll make another one happen Scripts nine change. 
Okay, we'll give these the same values. Var value 6,000. The only difference here is this will be 6,001. And I will paste this script. Very good. Now we'll test it out and see what I'm talking about. So if all things work out, there he is, comes right up and then leaves, goes away, he's gone, but now he magically reappears. Did you go in? And then he leaves again. Now if we go back, nothing happens.